Hello, 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 and welcome to our next episode of Pop Culture Therapy. I'm Corellica Kane. And it's me, Advent Nebula. And so today we are going to talk about anime of culture, or i.e. fan service. Which there's great series with fan service, terrible ones with fan service, and then the guilty pleasures. And the reason why we're talking about this is mainly because it's been like an ongoing joke and there's memes out there about it as well. Anime for gentlemen of culture. Basically, they're just picking on it, picking on guys who have pervy... I, I like my trash. And to be fair, I have to give Kaiji Okami props because I am a dirty old man in a woman's body. And I do enjoy fan service. Like one of my favorite, favorite guilty pleasure animes is still High School of the Dead. Where mine is Testament of Sister New Devil. <laughs> but the reason why we're talking about this is because admittedly fan service anime, one, it's hilarious when you get to hear gentlemen of culture because you're like, okay, are you either going on the level of dirty old man or are you just actually just a guy who likes watching boob physics yes <laughs> <laughs> and then there is actually really really good anime that has fantastic storytelling that you're like wait this is technically fan service kill the kill and my hame yeah both of those series are like stellar story writing. They just added elements of fan service, and you're like, okay, how does this compute? Where Kill a Kill did it in a very ingenious way. Exactly. So today we're just going to be talking about different fan service series that kind of go in the realm of good, bad, and ugly. Once again, we have to say that these are our personal opinions. They are not the opinions of one at Kaiji Okami because he would have a whole different argument going on right now. And two, don't hate on us just because we may like or hate something that you love. Yeah, exactly. Where I think almost anybody can agree on what's considered the holy trinity of the modern fan service animes, High School Double D, <laughs> Testament, Sister New Devil, and To Love Rue. And I have to say, for High School D&D, &D, you have to watch it tongue-in-cheek. You yeah. cannot watch it at all serious. Yeah, especially when the main character gets killed by a succubus and then ends up enslaving said succubus. And then for To Love Rue, that is honestly one of those series that also plays on the level of having a really good story at yeah. the same time. And while a lot of people don't realize, it ran in Shonen Jump. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's a Shonen Jump series, and it's important to note that being a Shonen Jump series, it has to fill out all of the other requirements not just fan service because Shonen Jump is not known for simply fan service. Yeah, I mean it fills out the ro romantic comedy stuff that because it was around the same time Netskoi was, which admittedly was a romantic comedy with just having a Western mobster and a Yakuza boss's daughter and son trying to hook up. Yes, which I have to say was a adorably weird series. So the reason why they call them the Holy Trinity of the modern fan service is because they actually do, in a way, push the envelope of modern anime. Because you could literally go, I could just take the scissors here and I have a hentai. Exactly. And that's why. Because truthfully, fan service does go on those two levels. You have... Is it really not hentai? Because it should be. Which Mos Monster Musunume should be hentai. I do not know why it's fan service. Whereas when you have a series like My Hime, which is actually very subtle with a fan service, but it's still 
fan service, especially when they go into her costumes. You're like, okay. And then Mayo Tame, which was like, hey, the maid cafe thing has sprung up in Japan. And the reason why I decided to go on this route of talking about it is not only just because of the gentleman of culture, because Advent and so many of our friends live this gentleman of culture anime lifestyle, but we recently watched Go Dinner. Which is a early 2000s harken back to the super robot anime of the 70s with a fan service twist if you've never seen it. And fan service twist is a nice way of saying you see more boobs than you ever thought you'd see in your life. I, I worry about the backs of so many of the women in the show. Um, but... <laughs> And that's kind of like the woman in me, like, oh, that's gotta hurt. Well, but, you gotta keep in mind the character designer is the same one that did a lot of hentai I, in the 90s. I know, because it was dr So the anime was drawn basically like it was from the 90s. It really is, I would say, an early version of what you would think for Code Geass because of the, of the mechs. As well as it does harken back, like you said, to the 70s and 80s with the big mechs, the monsters. The monster designs are so classic looking too. And the story is fantabulous because it's so... The story is, you can tell the creator loved going to guy. Absolutely. And the story is basically, for a simplistic way of saying it, five years prior to the start of this series, there was a huge monster attack, destroyed a large city. So in development were these mechs. Um, they either go by Go Danner, Donner, there's a whole ton of them. And different countries, kind of like G Gundam, have their own representative mech. And they actually have basically two separate mechs that combine into one. And the way they combine is hilarious based on the type of mech you have. Like Russia, their mechs combine and her boobs get bigger. America's is stereotypical America. And then Britain seems to be on the incest route. Yes, but their mech actually kind of turns into a dragon, which yeah. I thought was awesome. And then China has their cultural norms. So it's very interesting how it all works. And so it got me thinking, why not t dedicate an episode to fan service? Because you'd be amazed at what series are technically considered fan service, even though the cultural narrative would say it's completely different. For example... Utna. Yeah, which it's a fan service show not for men, but for women, even though it's a Yuri show. And that's another thing that people have to be aware of. Fan service does not mean it's simply just for men to look at pretty objects. And the flip side, you have it for women as well. Um, a great example of that, in my personal opinion, is X. Um, clamps. Their characters. Well, clamps. Um, Another one, Voice Christ. Even though it's a terrible show, yes. Um, another series that's technically fan service, but people don't think of it as such all the time, is Fairy Tale. And I think it's just because the author is so well known for his shonen style mm -hmm. writing, even though it's um, one of those series that he started with with Rave Master and now with Eden Zero. I love Rave Master. All three are very fan service laden, even though their target demographic are 15 to 20 year olds. Well, and the the qualifier for fan service is that it does have to go over the top with its presentation of the human body, be it male or female. So that's where you get the fan service. And most people look at fan service because some series go over the top than others. We just mentioned Kill a Kill. Her outfit is basically a, a giant thong. Yeah, and her both the outfits are parodies of fan service. That's what makes the show great. It's an allegory and parody in old fan service shows. And the reason why a series like Utna can be considered fan servicey is because of the character designs and how they emulate the presentation of both the male and female characters. They do it more subtly 
than a service uh, than a series like Kill a Kill, but it's still there. And then you ladies have free. <laughs> <laughs> that is beyond fan service. It is hilarious. Free is like I think the pinnacle for all female fan service. It is amazing. And these and it's hard to look at it as a fan service because they're all teenagers. And they're not just like legal age teenagers like 18. They're like 15. You're like, no. No, 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 no. But on the flip side, you have Yuri on Ice, which is as well as a sports anime, is considered a fan service show. I know. And people don't know why. <laughs> But it's technically a fan service because it has the elements that you look for. So Victor is the main reason. Oh yeah. So if you actually want to know the rules of fan service, one, you have to have somewhat hypersexualized presentation of characters. Akira Toriyama was notorious for this in the 80s and 90s. Yes, but technically Dragon Ball's universe is not considered fan service. Nope, but his other works oh, are, yeah. including the Dragon Quest games, which people don't realize. So the second, t second qualifier for fan service is you actually have to have comedic elements on the fan service. You can have a very serious show with fan service, but the fan service has to be done in a very tongue-in-cheek manner. High school did. dead. I have many, many thoughts about that series, and I still love it. It's boob physics is like off the charts, especially when you put an AK-47 on top of it. Um, <laughs> Makes DOA's boob physics look like it's plausible. <laughs> So this third qualifier for it is you have to make sure it does not cross the line. That's and what we mean by cross the line is actually have any, for lack of a better way of saying it, any... Basically redo a healer if you are yes, up with yes, the modern. Yes, yes, yes. And it, redo a healer crosses the boundary where... High School Double D, Testament of Sister New Devil, and Two Love Rue. I said, just take a scissor, and it is. Redo a healer basically is. Exactly. And so you can't cross that line. And it, it's not like a cultural line or anything like that. It's basically the line that says it's not hentai. And you can always tell when a series is... And this is even for manga, when it is fan service based on the presentations, more often not the female characters. Yes, male characters, you do have that, especially like you mentioned with Free, but more often than not, you're going to have it with the female characters. Yeah. Oh, great. Probably the best author to exemplify this, considering he's done both etchy fan service stuff and hentai. So, Go and a Guy is also a great example of knowing how to stay within those lines. And he's a godfather of it, too. He, oh, absolutely. And he also demonstrates incredible storytelling, because with his Devilman series, just to name the most important of them all, he really demonstrates fan service for both the male and female form. And then he goes on to create Cutie Honey right after. And that's like the pinnacle of old school fan service. And then, as we're on this topic too, of that cross the line, his creation of Kako Kamen, which is just a masked naked woman as a superhero. Now, another series that is technically a shonen series, but is also very fan servicey, I think to the point where it needs to be constituted as fan service, is Food Wars. Chrysalis Bloodborne has been on this escapade of us watching Food Wars while we work out. I don't know why he needs to make us watch a show about food to make us even hungrier, but watching the eating scenes, that's an, uh, that's an element of take a scissor, a pair of scissors to it and you cross the line. I don't know how they get away with it for a kid's show. And then on the flip side, you have high Q for the ladies. With volleyball scenes, it's like, just let the boys kiss already. 
And so that is also another valid point that's a difference between men and women. Women's level of fan service gets closer to the Fujoshi level, whereas guys, <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. And it's not to be sexist or it's not to generalize. It's kind of, in a way, the truth. Fans are fans of certain things. But the reason why people pick on guys more for it than girls is because it's more plentiful. You have it in Clanid. You have it in Love Hina. You have it in Tenshi Muyo. You can have the most understated series and the level of fan service is off the charts. You have it in, oh God, I could name Black Lagoon. Yeah. Where on the flip side, they just started getting more with the stereotypical male fan service shows and some of the women's fan service shows with the most recent series this season, The Titan's Bride. Oh God, don't. Get me on that path, because that show is terrible. But I agree. <laughs> and the other important thing to know about fan service is you kind of do need it. Even in a series that has a very serious story. Let's use, for example, Gundam 00. That story it's is... one of the darkest Gundam stories when you actually analyze it. If you, yeah, if you actually take out everything except for the story, you're like, okay, this and Iron Blooded Orphans. Which Iron Blooded Orphans had almost zero fan service in it at times. It, it was, did. It made it really hard to get through. But with Double O, you didn't have like excessive amounts of fan service, but you had just enough to make it where you felt like you had some levity. Code Geass did an awesome job of balancing the fan service with the story. Well, and if you think about it, Rossifon does it as well. So does Ghost in the Shell. You need, you need to have fan service. And even in your very, like, high-level slice-of-life series, like Fruits Basket or, um, oh God, there's so many out there. Um, even Sugar the Snow Fairy. You had elements of fan service because while fan service can be taken negatively, it's actually what makes it fun. Yeah. And fan service doesn't always strictly reference the human form. You also have fan service calling it back to other things as well. Mecha shows are notorious for adding callbacks to other mech shows within the fan service community there. Mm-hmm. And it's all about how you connect the story to it. Like, like I mentioned with Monster Masamune, that, oh, it's basically to the point where it's just fan service and nothing else. And when you have a series like that, you can't even ask the gentleman of culture to enjoy it. Yeah, it's one of the most popular series when it comes to fan service anime in the modern day. I don't, I enjoy the manga, not big on the anime. Well, if you look at another popular series, even the dub in America is terrible, is Rosario the Vampire. The series was terrible for an anime, yet the manga was great. I will say, watching it in Japanese, I actually like... I don't like all the deviations of the story, though. Well, no. Because it ruined my favorite character, which is the Ice Queen. But... As if you look at it solely itself without acknowledging the manga, it is hilarious and it is 100% fan service. I think where I have a hard time with fan service is when it does get to the point where you forget all the other characters. Like there were times in Go Dinner where you would have so much fan service in the episode, especially with the mom. You're like, okay, am I going to get a story? Because I'm feeling a little pornographic right now. Yeah, she's a favorite character. Oh, no, she's my favorite character, but still. But gentlemen of culture, 
I think it's worth it. And I don't think it's just regulated to guys. You can be a female and have gentlemen of culture favorites. I do with High School of the Dead and Fairy Tale and Fire Force and half of the series I own technically. Because in all honesty, I believe that Sailor Moon is fan service. And you can fight me on that argument. I'm not going to argue. I mean, you, you guys got to look at it this way. It's Toei. What were they doing at the time? Oh, I try not to think about it being Toei because Toei runs everything into the ground, no matter how good it is. Which we'll get on another topic on that on a later date. Oh, yes. We have arguments about that. However, enjoy your Gentlemen of Culture series. Maybe next time I'll, we'll have an update from Advent on what Gentlemen of Culture series he has taken. Maybe we'll do like a whole skit on it where you can have like a coffee talk or something. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I haven't been watching a lot of culture stuff right now. I guess I went on a Leiji Mazumoto fix. No. Which, there's not a lot of fan service in space opera. That's more just drama, drama, and more drama. Yeah, I actually have been doing the anime of culture route because, as we joked about with the Fujoshi aspect of anime of culture, um, I that's all I've been binging, and JoJo's, and I fight, and that's another series you can fight me, but that is fan service. Fan service for the ladies more than the gentlemen. I love it though, but on that note. We are going to wrap this up, and next time we're going to have an episode talking about... Common Rider in America. Yeah, we're going from... It looks like our episodes are going from serious to lighthearted to... Now we're just fanboy and fangirling. Yeah, but this is something that we need to bring up on our own fandom on this, because this is important absolutely as so, fans of tokusatsu but we will also bring up something else under this episode too hasbro didn't renew its license with toei so we're gonna have to talk about what that looks like as well and obviously it's all conjecture but we'll see you next time when we'll talk about that pull-up culture aspect bye <laughs>